Hi, this is Andy with K4GKP with the Ham Whisper, and welcome back for lesson two in test preparation for the Technician Operator Element 2 exam. Today we'll be covering the T1B questions. Uh, last time we covered the T1A, and that was pretty much definitions and junk like that. This one's going to have some frequencies, it's going to have some uh, federal agencies and international agency information. So let's get going. All right, in this lesson, we're going to be covering authorized frequencies, frequency allocations, ITU regions, emission types, restricted subbands, spectrum sharing, transmissions near band edges. You will probably see one question from this group on the exam, so pay a little attention. I I'm giving you some shortcuts, and maybe we can make things a little bit easier. All right, so here's the first shortcut. If you look at the bands, the frequencies, and the modes of communication associated with those bands, this is the stuff you need to memorize to answer the questions for, to, for the technician exam correctly. Now, these aren't all the privileges a technician class operator would get, but these are just ones you need to know to answer the questions. So I would re highly recommend memorizing these. Uh, if you have questions about the frequencies or the modes of communication, uh, stop by hamwhisper.blogspot.com. I'll have links to all that information on the website. With that said, let's get going on the questions. All right, what is the ITU? Well, the ITU is the International Telecommunication Union. Now, this is a United Nations organization, and even though it's part of the United Nations, it is actually pretty effective. It establishes regions and coordinates inter international telecommunications activities so that countries don't end up hating each other because they're bumping into each other on the airwaves. So it's a pretty good organization. Why are the frequency assignments for some U.S. territories different from those in the 50 U.S. states? The thing you need to know is that the ITU region that the continental United States falls into is ITU region 2. Now the purpose of the ITU, as we discussed in the previous question, is essentially to make sure that there's good order and harmony between different nations as far as making sure that radio frequency allocations don't overlap or conflict with each other. Well, in some of the outlying parts of the United States, like the Far East pieces, like in, uh, um, I don't know, some of the territories in the Atlantic and uh, parts of Alaska and the Pacific, don't necessarily fall within ITU Region 2 or closely lap another ITU region. Now, to prevent conflict um, among amateur radios and other countries' radio allocations, what the ITU will do is assign those areas different amateur radio frequency privileges to prevent that conflict. So that is why some places in the United States have different amateur radio frequency privileges than those in the continental United States. All right, the next question. North American amateur stations are located in which ITU region? It's another one you just have to memorize. It's region 2. So region 2 is the answer to this question. If you're curious about a map of ITU regions globally, I have a link on hamwhisper.blogspot.com. Which frequency is within the 6 meter band? Well, the 6 meter band privileges for amateur radio operators falls between 50 megahertz and 54 megahertz. So anything in that range is within the 6 meter amateur privileges. There's only one answer on the exam that's in the 50s. Just remember 6 meter and 50. Next question, which amateur band are you using when your station is transmitting on 146.52 megahertz? Well, this is going back to that earlier slide that I told you you had to memorize. The 2 meter band falls between 144 and 148 megahertz. So 146.52 is in the 2 meter band. Which 70 centimeter frequency is authorized to a technician class license holder operating in ITU Region 2? Well, break it down. ITU Region 2 is the United States. It's the only one you have to remember. The 70 centimeter amateur frequencies are 420 to 450 megahertz. The only answer on the exam in the 400 range is the correct one. So there's no trick questions. Which 23 centimeter frequency is authorized to a technician class operator license? Well, you don't have to memorize anything special for this one outside the frequency range, but technician, general, and extra class hams all have the same privileges on 23 centimeters. The answer to this question is the only answer that falls in that spectrum at 1,240 to 1,300 megahertz. What amateur band are you using if you are transmitting on 223.50 megahertz? It's another one you just have to memorize. 223.5 falls within the 1.25 meter band. 
Which of the following is a result of the fact that the amateur service is secondary in some portions of the 70 centimeter band? What this comes down to is that there are certain amateur bands where we share the frequency privileges with non-amateur services. And often what is the case in these situations is that we, the amateur community, are not the primary users of those frequencies. So whenever we hear a non-amateur service on those frequencies, we just need to get out of their way and let them do their thing because they have the right of way and we don't. So that's why on some amateur bands and the 70 centimeter band, we are the secondary users for certain frequency allocations. Why should you not set your transmit frequency to be exactly at the edge of an amateur band or subband? Well, there are many reasons for this, and that is a key thing to remember. There are many reasons for this. The first one is your calibration on your transmitter could be off, and that sets the signal outside where you think it does. Another thing is, is there's something like harmonic frequencies or sideband modulations that act like a reflection of your signal. So you could be, in addition to where you're transmitting, you could be transmitting at a harmonic frequency somewhere up or down the spectrum. And the third reason is that some transmitters, they drift a little bit. So while you're transmitting, your transmitter could slide up and down the spectrum a little bit. The key to remember is that there are many answers to this question. Which of the bands above 30 megahertz that are available to technician class operators have mode restrictive subbands? Now you have to think back to the list of bands that you had to memorize and there were only three bands that had a piece of the band that was solely devoted to a specific mode of operation. Six meters and two meters both had portions of their um, frequency allocations solely devoted to Morse code or CW. And then 1.25 meters had a portion designated for digital message forwarding systems. Now one of the things to remember is that when they're talking, when a question asks for a band that is above a certain frequency, what it's referring to is a band with a shorter wavelength than that frequency. So for instance, 30 megahertz is roughly 10, 11 meters uh, of wavelength. So 6 meters and 2 meters and 1.25 meters all have shorter wavelengths than 30 megahertz. So they are higher frequencies or um, above 30 megahertz. What emission modes are permitted in the mode restricted subbands at 50 to 50.1 megahertz and 144 to 144.1 megahertz? Once again, go back to that slide, you'll see that 6 meters and 2 meters have a portion of the band solely devoted to CW, otherwise known as Morse code. Why are frequency assignments for U.S. stations operating maritime mobile not the same everywhere in the world? It's a pretty common sense answer. Um, if you remember back to where we were talking about the uh, ITU regions, um, the ITU regions basically define what amateur frequency allocations you're going to have. The continental United States is in ITU region 2. However, if you're on a boat and you're sailing the world, you're going to fall within different ITU regions. So your amateur allocations will depend on what ITU region you are in. Which emission may be used between 219 and 220 megahertz? The answer is data, and this is one you're going to just have to memorize. Data is the only mode that is authorized between 219 and 220 megahertz. All right, the review is over, and now it's time for the quiz. So take out a pencil and paper and number 1 through 13. When you're done with the quiz, you can go to hamwhisper.com and check your answers there. You can find them under the exam answers page under the T1B questions. All right, with that said, let's get ready for the quiz. Question one, what is the ITU? A, an agency of the United States Department of Telecommunications Management. B, a United Nations agency for information and communication technology issues. C, an independent frequency coordination agency. Or D, a department of the FCC. Question two, why are the frequency assignments for some U.S. territories different from those in the 50 U.S. states? A. Some U.S. territories are located in ITU regions other than Region 2. B. Territorial governments are allowed to select their own frequency allocations. C. Territorial frequency allocations must also include those of adjacent countries. Or D. Any territory that was in existence before ratification of the Communications Act of 1934 is exempt from FCC frequency regulations. Which frequency is within the 6 meter band? A. 49 megahertz. B. 52.525 megahertz, C, 28.5 megahertz, or D, 
222.15 MHz. Which amateur band are you using when your station is transmitting on 146.52 MHz? A. 2 meter band, B. 20 meter band, C. 14 meter band, or D. 6 meter band? Question 5. Which 70 centimeter frequency is authorized to a technician class license holder operating in ITU Region 2? A. 53.35 MHz, B. 146.52 MHz, C. 443.35 MHz, or D. 222.52 MHz? Question 6. Which 23 centimeter frequency is authorized to a technician class operator license? A. 2315 MHz. B. 1,296 MHz, C. 3,390 3, MHz, or D. 146.52 MHz. Question 7. What amateur band are you using if you are transmitting on 223.5 MHz? A. 15 meter band, B. 10 meter band, C. 2 meter band, or D. 1.25 meter band? Question 8. Which of the following is a result of the fact that the amateur service is secondary in some portions of the 70 centimeter band? A. U.S. amateurs may find non-amateur stations in the bands and must avoid interfering with them. B. U.S. amateurs must give foreign amateur stations priority in those portions. C. International communications are not permitted on 70 centimeters. Or D. Digital transmissions are not permitted on 70 centimeters. Question 9. Why should you not set your transmit frequency to be exactly at the edge of an amateur band or subband? A. To allow for calibration error in the transmitter frequency display. B. So that modulation sidebands do not extend beyond the band edge. C. To allow for transmitter frequency drift. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Question 10. Which of the bands above 30 MHz that are available to technician class operators have mode restricted subbands? A. The 6 meter, 2 meter, and 70 centimeter bands. B, the 2 meter and 13 centimeter bands, C, the 6 meter, 2 meter, and 1.25 meter bands, or D, the 2 meter and 70 centimeter bands. And question 11. What emission modes are permitted in the mode restricted subbands at 50 to 50.1 MHz and 144 to 144.1 MHz? A, CW only, B, CW and RTTY, C, single sideband only, or D, CW, and single sideband? Question 12. Why are frequency assignments for U.S. stations operating maritime mobile not the same everywhere in the world? A. Amateur maritime mobile stations in international waters must conform to the frequency assignments of the country nearest to their vessel. B. Amateur frequency assignments can vary among the three ITU regions. C. Frequency assignments are determined by the captain of the vessel or D, amateur frequency assignments are different in each of the 90 ITU zones. And question 13. Which emission may be used between 219 and 220 MHz? A, spread spectrum, B, data, C, SSB or single sideband voice, or D, fast scan television. And that's it for the T1B questions. Now go to handwhisper.com, go to the exam answers page, and check your answers under the T1B section. And until next time, with the T1C section, this is Andy, KE4GKP, saying 73s, and I hope to hear you on the air soon.